Amond, Amond, Amond. Greetings, everyone. Sir Braun of the Black War, the breakdown of this week's House of the Dragon episode. Oh, and there will be spoilers ahead, so if that's not your sort of thing, well, been warned. This episode is the fantastic advantage of at last slowing down the pacing of this series to a reasonable level. All the players have gathered on Driftmark for Lena's funeral. Though there are a couple outliers who seem genuinely affected by her passing, mainly this is to show a bunch of uneasy glances and political division that we've come to know and love from Westeros. Even Daemon Targaryen, her late husband, is already scoping out his future prospects in the form of his niece, Rhaenyra. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that, Princess. He's a widower twice over. Seems like a death sentence to me. Corlys and Rhaenys have a nice heart-to-heart -heart by the hearth, which we really see just how desperate Corlys is to cement his family's name in history. He even goes on to let Rhaenys know he doesn't care if Rhaenyra's children do not share his blood, only that they share his name. Poor guy hasn't seen Game of Thrones, apparently, or he'd know his grand ambitions do not pan out so well as he hopes. <laughs> Somewhere on the beaches of Driftmark, Rhaenyra and Daemon have a nice walk and talk discussing the passing of their significant others. Daemon states that he may not have loved Lena, but they were happy together, whilst Rhaenyra expresses her doubt that Allison could be so vile to orchestrate the murder of Harwin. It's a fine scene that sets up their relationship and concludes with some beach sex. Too soon on both accounts, but uh, Targaryens, right? However, Daemon is far from the only Targaryen looking to get some mounting done on the dunes of Driftmark, as we find little princeling Aemon stealthily creeping on the now riderless Vagar. The scene is pretty good and we get the most harrowing dragon riding experience that we've yet to see in the show. Fortunately, he lands safely, having finally claimed his dragon that he's been so coveting for almost an episode. Also, is that all it takes to claim a dragon is right at once? It seems like it's way too easy. But not everyone can be happy about the young princeling's triumph, as cousins understandingly upset about not only losing their mother, but also having their dragon stolen away from them. A 4v1 brawl breaks out where Aemon kicks some serious ass, but he makes the dire mistake of calling Rhaenyra's children bastards, or strongs, which he ends up losing an eye for. The characters all gather in a hall for a big dumb meeting, and you really see Viserys is just at his wit's end with all this infighting. Poor guy, he just wants his family to get along. He's still in denial about Rhaenyra's children, and Allison grabs up Littlefinger's dagger and cuts Rhaenyra with it. She was asking for some pretty unreasonable thing, like Luke's eye and penance for Aemon's. But her son makes a good point saying he got a dragon, so it was worth the eye. Do not mourn me, mother. It was a fair exchange. I may have lost an eye, but I gained a dragon. Cementing himself as a badass. Oh, we have a nice touching scene between Rhaenyra and Lenor, where he promises to be a better husband, which is great setup for her having him killed off at the end of the episode. Rip, bro. Rhaenyra marries Damon in a wedding on the beach, and everyone returns to their starting position for the next time jump. What are the takeaways from this episode? Well, I think this episode greatly benefits from the pacing being slowed down, so that we can see more interpersonal dynamics come to light between these characters, especially the younger generation. Though I've seen a lot of Rhaenyra supporters who decry Allison as the clear villain of this story, I think this episode does a great job in showing they are both detestable people. After episode 7 finished, I'm really not even sure who I should be rooting for anymore, because all these people just seem like they're awful. I mean, I, there's really not a likable one in the bunch. Lenor may have had his faults, but he definitely didn't deserve to go out like that. Oh wait, I guess he's still alive. Well, shit. But who knows what Corliss will do. He seems like he'll be contented on living the lie for the sake of his name alone. Oh, and Otto Hightower is Hand of the King again, because I guess there's only two people in Westeros suited for that job. Him and Viserys didn't have any interaction this episode, but uh, maybe next one that'll set up some good things. But overall, this episode belonged to Aemon Targaryen, who saw the biggest gains. Everyone keeps hyping up Damon, but this guy has literally done nothing and has been riding on his snarky comments since the first couple episodes. Damon got in a 4v1 fight, stole a dragon, lost an eye, and is still like, yeah, it's all cool, bro. I got what I wanted. Best Targaryen. Saying it now. But those are just my thoughts and takeaways. What did you think? If you liked the video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more House of the Dragon content. I'm off to go edit a world map. Peace.
Oh, Jesus. Oh, my pants are wet. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, baby. Oh, Yo! Bang.